Welcome back, everybody, to Goblets and Warlocks. This is episode 32 of Dragonlance, Shadow of the Dragon Queen. Um, as you do know, if you watched last episode, it was very emotional. And um, I think it still only has like five likes. So make sure you go uh, tune into the YouTube and give us some loves and likes and comments. It's very emotional. I don't know if I can ever watch it again. Um, but, uh, our, another video on there is the black order, which only has five lights and, the uh, players get, uh, extra dice depending on how many lights it is right now. It'll be only a D four. So head on over to the YouTube and, uh, you know, give it a like and, you know, comment and all that good stuff. So, alrighty. Um, let's turn it over to our fellow streamers in chat. Nihilish. Hello. Hello. I am not. However, going to be streaming tomorrow. I have way too many other things I'm going to be doing. Uh, but probably still be streaming Sunday afternoon. I'm still playing on Honkai right now. Uh, and then we have Cleansing Rain. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I have been pushing it for, for quite some time. It's probably closer to a year than it is a six-month break at this point. But uh, I think we're at that, that finish threshold. I'm ordering some some gear this weekend should be here midweek and i'm aiming to be playing next weekend as a uh, first streams back so that's what uh we're aiming to do here um this time kind of changing the whole scope of of the stream so if it's not necessarily about the gaming or even the subscribing or the following or anything like that but rather i want to take a step further and try to try to develop voice acting a little bit and use twitch as just a way to audition for things so a lot of the stream is now going to take place of trying to imitate characters and and do impressions of different characters along with the typical twitch stuff of hanging out and playing and communicating so And uh, we'll give Garrus, go ahead and give a Garrus a shout out too, because we miss him and wish he would come back. But choices have been made. So anyway, with that being said, let's get on with tonight's episode. I've changed the intro up a little bit more. I've, I made a photo of all the art, kind of like a mural for the family that we have here. And the people who are no longer with us are kind of grayed out. So, anyway, we'll uh, enjoy the intro and we'll come back in. Uh, Ziggy rolled the lowest, even though he could re-roll with his inspiration, he refused. So, his recap of beer be top tier after that last episode. So, with that being said, grab your goblet, sit back and relax, and enjoy the show.
And welcome back. Siggy, would you like to lead us into the night's recap? Uh, sure. Um, so yeah, last week was a very special episode for the Dragonlands campaign. Uh, as we started by uh, cleaning up the few remaining members of uh, Trapanic Army that was holding uh, holding fort at Camp Carrion Clay. Uh, uh, we cleaned up the rest of those guys and then uh, we stumbled down the tower exhausted and found to our horror and shock that the great uh, Belrum orc foe had fallen during battle. Uh, I think it came as a great shock to everybody, including Dashian, who was so shocked he started looting the corpse as quickly as possible. We all deal with our grief in different ways. <clears throat> um, at that point, uh, there was a lot of grieving, a lot of laying a fault, uh, and a lot of various deep conversations about death, passing, mourning, things like that. Um, I believe Dashen uh, took to uh, being kind of a self, self-pitying self kind of uh, mope about for, for a little while. Uh, Ziggy gave him a pep talk. There was a few other important detailed conversations that you should totally go and watch the YouTube and see the details of those conversations because I'm not going to relate everything, uh, but they were deep and meaningful and interesting interactions between characters. Uh, and I highly recommend the YouTube channel. Uh, then I believe at some point we all decided that we we're going to take a bunch of stuff from the camp and head out uh, over to uh, meet some friends, eventually rolling back with our uh, with our army team and uh, taking Belrum's body back to Cudgel and maybe uh, thinking about some sort of uh, uh, ceremony that's gonna happen. Uh, we said goodbye to a bunch of sea elves that we saved and they tr tromped off into the wilderness uh, to return to the temple uh, to the see their friend Ishvin. Um, and then, uh, in deep in the tents of one of uh, the main tent of, in the camp carrying clay, we discovered, uh, the egg, a dragon egg, a bronze dragon egg. We were all very shocked and amazed by the, uh, bronze dragon egg. Uh, but it was very fleeting, uh, because immediately thereafter, a giant adult black dragon, uh, a female whose name escapes me. Oh, they should get her name. Yeah, we didn't get her name. Uh, came down and easily, easily bested the party with a single breath, breath weapon attack. Pretty much knocked everybody down, uh, except for Ziggy, who was able to do a little bit of healing. But we pretty and much dashing. all just in dashing, yeah. Uh, we pretty much all just kind of gripped our, uh, it, it went into a fetal position and gripped our knees until the dragon was nice enough to fly away, uh, taking one last terrible bite to destroy uh, this today's iteration of Stardust on 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 her way out of the camp uh, in just a violent display. Uh, I believe after that, we didn't do much. There was some conversation, and I think that we're generally just getting everybody together, getting some gear together, and we're walking to... We're going to hang out with this uh, kinder you set up, their you, village. You set up camp, right? and then oh. Vera had her vision. That is correct. So, yeah, we went... Uh, uh, Ziggy did some survival roles, so we set up a, a hopefully uh, hidden defensible camp uh, uh, that we can uh, stay for the long rest. Uh, Vera had uh, a vision. Uh, I believe is that uh, we, they got uh, got their letter um, from. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, uh, not here. Uh, Bellroom had apparently been much more literate than we'd given him credit for, and not only what literate, but a poet. We found out as he wrote uh, letters for each and every one in the party, uh, giving uh, meaningful. Uh, heartfelt uh, advice, praise, and some criticism in Ziggy's case. Uh, yeah, I think that wraps it up. Yeah, and Vera had her vision after reading 
the letter of Balram walking to the halls of Valhalla. And that's where we had ended it because I couldn't take any more because I was, I was, I was spent, I was done. So, um, we'll pick up there as y'all are getting ready to take a long rest as y'all are completely beaten up and exhausted and acid and, and everything under the sun. So we'll pick up there with Vera returning to the party as y'all setting up camp. All right, so who took the least amount of damage? Because you've got first watch. Uh, I, that would Not probably that. Be, be me. I was able to absorb mm -hmm. most of the acid damage. Yep, you got first watch on your Ziggy, and I pat you on the just below the gluteus maximus. And <laughs> Ziggy <laughs> kind of, yeah, he kind of tears up a little bit because he remembers back when an angry Balram wouldn't let him stand watch. Now no one will be angry that he's standing watch. It's a little sad. You might stand and watch with him. I know Dash, you can do... Right. Yeah. Uh, doing some basic math, I think Dashjin acknowledges that if we are to watch in teams of two throughout the night, that he will have to pull double duty for this time. But he views that as a small form of penance for some of his uh, less than courageous behavior as of late. So Daz volunteers to... Uh, he, he, he walked straight out the little encampment alongside Ziggy without there having to be much of a question for volunteering. Who has second watch? I can take second. <laughs> then Dashton will also take second. So at least Carrie and Mela probably taking last watch. Thank you. We at least have somebody with dark vision in each watch. So, um, if you want to pick up right when Vera returning to camp for me in the letter, we can do that too before we actually go into the watches, if you like. You probably see Vera and probably tears as she waltz back. You're right. I'm okay. Dashin will be rereading the letter left to him, which, if you can remember, was, um, you know, never mind. I won't even say. <clears throat> yeah, let's not go down that rabbit hole again. <laughs> now, it won't really it was, rabbit hole, but like trauma again. Let's not relive it. <laughs> even though it well, not Dashin's. The note from Dash for Dashin was. Sent. Oh yeah, it was not, but yeah. Wanka that's... just threatened me, even from the grave. <laughs> Traumatizing in another way. <laughs> but, uh... Ah, never mind. That's not going to go down to that. I was going to ask what each one said, but... We Too will soon. just press on. Press on. Vera... I don't believe I've seen you get so emotional before. I don't believe we've known each other long enough for you to be able to say that. I'm okay. I'm better than okay. Kina, you didn't want to take any uh, watch? You asking Kina? Yep. Give me a perception check. She is Just going call. through our things. She is going through our things, <laughs> stealing everything, isn't she? My passive is 14. Would I have noticed anything? I didn't notice shit. Eight. All right. What's everybody's passive perception check besides Vera? Vera's rolling because she wasn't at camp. What about everybody else? Sixteen. So you have four, 
14, 16, dashing. 16. Yours is 13, I think. I couldn't tell you where to look, to be honest. It's under, it's under your saving throws. Passive. Perception. Oh, yeah, 14. 14. Oh, no, no. I don't see... Oh, yeah, it is 14. Sorry, that's a wisdom. Okay. But. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Mela and Ziggy, you... You you knew this from like setting up camp, whatever. And Carrie, uh, eventually, Carrie and Dash, and you eventually see that uh, uh, Kenna has passed the fuck out in one of the tents after you immediately was set up. I guess that's a no then. I think she was. A I bit am. Tired. I am patting down my pockets. <laughs> no muted, Jurgen. Everything seems to be there. Okay. Carrie, are you checking no. anything? Uh, sure. <laughs> what are you checking? I check my pockets. Just in case. Everything you had in your pockets is there. I'm bad at this. I don't know what is new. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I already had that. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. new. It's what's missing. Well, she wouldn't have gotten anything from the bag of holding. Surely. I check my backpack. Everything's there. Rideroo, did anyone break into you? Rideroo! Got no idea what that means. <laughs> so, if you know how a bag of holding works, you put your hand in, you think about what's in the bag of holding, and then you can pull it out. So, that's the only way to check the bag of holding. I don't know what's missing. <laughs> There's so much shit in there. <laughs> Well, I mean, you would know can what's in there. Can I make an intact. intelligence check? Or you can turn Rataru inside out. Well, I can, like, written in my inventory, I can see what's in there. I just don't know what's missing. Oh. Uh, it's like Neville Longbottom with the rem rememberal. You you know something's <laughs> missing, you just don't know what. Oh. Uh, can I make a, like, history check to see if Carrie remembers? Because I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Can you do it with advantage since it's recent? Uh, mod 20. Mod 20. So I'm assuming we're going to go, you're going in and just thinking about what you're trying to pull out. Is that how we're doing it? Sure. Okay. You're pulling out like all the beads and nourishments. Yep, they're there. Uh, you're pulling out the bracers of defense that you got from Bill. Yeah, they're there. I don't know where you got the vicious lance, but they're there. Neither do I. Uh, as one of the bad guys, I don't remember which one it was. That came from me, thank you. Was it? It did? Yeah. The I vicious lance. that thing off of the dead, what should we call it, at the bottom of the water? Oh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you pull out the decanter, endless water. You pull out everything that's in your thing, and then when you go to pull out Ballroom's ads, it's not there. Ah, oh, Adzi. I immediately go over to the sleeping Kenda and just don't even announce myself. Pat her down. <laughs> You're muted again. <laughs> Trying to sleep. Trying to recover. Do you happen to have your little mitts on a mat? Oh. <laughs> have your little mitts on an axe? You do realize, remember, the axe is probably the size of you in the rest of the kinder? Nope. Well, For some reason, I thought it was a hand axe. When I had no, it it's a great half axe. an episode, it says it adjusts its size based on what the holder can hold. Yeah. <laughs> But it is Earth still break. a great axe. You have to use two hands to use. So it's pretty obvious she doesn't have it. 
it's pretty obvious she doesn't have it. Have you seen a great bloody axe then? See many. <sighs> yeah, that's fair. Oi, everyone! I yell out without trying to Please lower me. my voice for the sleeping one. Bellroom's axe is gone. It was in the bag of holding. Now it's not. I don't know where it's gone. Help. Don't look at me. I'm the one who put it in the bag. I do remember um, that. You're safe. <laughs> I'll stand up and start looking around the campsite to see if maybe it got misplaced. Like, maybe on the the elk that's carrying Bellroom. I'll go and look. I don't think you guys need to worry about it. It's with Bellroom. I join Mela looking over... Velrum's body. <laughs> Not like that. The the axe came to us, if you remember. Uh, we didn't find it. We didn't pick it off a body. We didn't any of that. It came to us. It's with Velrum now. Oh. Oh, you're not saying that it's buried. Or anything like his that. Body. Right? No, his his body is fine. It's it's not in that. He's it's passed on with him. How does it was and spirit stuff? I don't get it. Whatever you say, it's with Bellroom. Sure. I wonder if that's what happened to my strumming. Ooh. Now that's getting me metaphysical. Whatever that you means. You could go join it. Do you need help? I could so do what? <laughs> she said join it. Need help? Oh. Oh. No, 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 that that won't be necessary. I'm just speculating here. Let's not be too hasty. So does that imply magical weapons have some sort of soul or spirit that can be, you know, get move on to other realms and stuff like that? When they're given to you. But wouldn't it, like... The spirit of the weapon, uh, but then the physical presence of the weapon would still be left here in this plane, right? Well, uh, Belram said that he wanted Adzi to be given to the mage lady in uh, Calaman. We, we can give so. her something else. We promised her the first magical item he got. That did not mean it had to be his uh, hammer. All right. Well, Actually, basically, the Braces of defense are going to cudgel. I can give her the vicious lance. I'm sure that'll be fine. Magic. Although I'd want to sell that. That must fetch a pretty penny. Well, I think we're supposed to hang on to the lance and use it in some sort of uh, heroic final battle. Oh, no, it's not. It, bloody it's not, hell, it's not a dragon lance. It's a vicious lance, so we got it off the fish people. Oh, I'm getting my lances confused. <laughs> There's la so many lances and tridents wandering around nowadays. Yeah, we did previously find a broken lance. Yeah, I've still got that, actually. It's down the bottom here somewhere. Good. Well, th let's not take it out, just in case. We'll leave it. I think I already so did. Fossicking through, looking for what's missing. Yeah. I was like, well, I'll chuck everything back in. <laughs> and everything's in a pile next to the bag yep. of holding as you were searching. Rattle, 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 rattle. Ah, screw it. <laughs> feed you. It just feed you. It's fine. Hey, that's what he gets for being a traitor. He wouldn't take that egg last he time. He wouldn't take that egg. It Though, now I think it. about it. Now I think about it. If that dragon was bollocks. So, if I'd put the egg in the bag of holding, it either would have taken the bag of holding or just, like, destroyed it. And uh, that's fair enough on Righty Roos. 
a, a point of view. He did not want to be fit. stolen. It wouldn't fit. Okay, well, what do you Unless I'm holding it. Totally could have fit, mister. I I feel like if we're getting You've entire... Taken bigger. If we're getting entire lances and stuff into Rideroo, why why wouldn't he take a an, a, a, an egg ship? That's what I'm saying. The dragon would have hurt him. So he was like, no, I'm not taking that. That makes sense. Uh, personally, I think not the we, balls he enjoys. Yeah. If we, yeah. <laughs> if we tried to hide that egg, we would all be dead now. Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, disappointing uh, because that hatchling could have saved the world. The bronze dragons are very powerful dragons. I was just reading about them. They shoot lightning and such. Uh, they could have not been... when they're babies, though, eh? Not when they're babies, no. But uh, you know uh, that the potential in that egg was enormous, and the potential for like um, I don't know, good uh, from that species of dragon is enormous as well. Um, That's the thing. I wonder why. You said the black dragon was evil, yeah? Why oh, would yeah. it want to take a good dragon egg? I'd understand smashing it to, like, kill the baby, but why would it take it? Strange. I'm imagining some sort of uh, slavery angle, or oh. possibly, uh, possibly they're collecting the eggs of good dragons to do some sort of um, spell of control, or there's all sorts of various possibilities. Uh, you know, the, the evil bugger. dragons and the good dragons have been feuding for thousands of years. Who knows their tactics? Uh, Ziggy, strategies. Give me a history check. What's that? Give me a history check, Ziggy. Uh, sure. I got a soul. Twelve. Give me here with advantage. Okie dokie. Whoops. Well, I got 21 on that one, if you want to just okay. say that's the advantage. Okay. Uh, with your histories and reading, you always claim that you always done in specialties in Dragon in your session. Uh, you've read about somewhere where the Dragon armies take Dragon heads and corrupt them and turn them into what you've been fighting. Okay, guys. I know exactly what they need these eggs for. The... These eggs are what breeds the draconian armies and the maybe the dragon elves as well. The the evil dragons use these to uh, make basically make evil corrupted soldiers. Uh, so we we, we kind of let another you know corruption happen. Not that we had much of a choice. Maybe we should have just smashed it, saved it from a worse fate. In hindsight, probably, but I want to return to, I believe, if we dash that egg on the ground, first of all, it's extremely difficult to destroy a dragon. Uh, but we would have been immediately annihilated um, by the, the, the black dragon. We were already on our, on our, on our you know, uh, last legs. And uh, yeah, we'd all be dead right now if we didn't let that egg escape. That being said, I wonder why it decided to spare us. It would have been no problem for it to just go nom nom. Or smash uh, smash. In my reading, uh, dragons are, uh, especially evil dragons, are essentially um, kind of selfish and lazy. And I'm mm. sure it's in its best interest. And, you know, just because we knew it could annihilate us, it, that dragon doesn't know. They, they really don't like to get hurt. And they especially don't want land people. Uh... Uh, you know, stabbing them and stuff like that. So I mean, if you was... remember correctly, she kept calling you insignificant beneath her type deal. Yeah, uh, yeah. Would you? Would you? You know? Would you bother? You know, if you're you're uh, getting a gem, and it was just covered with ants, would you bother taking the time to kill every single ant? You just mm -hmm. knock off a few and take what you wanted, and keep keep going, right? So that's probably. Um, how 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 the that dragon's viewing us at this point? So we are ants. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. I would say that maybe less than ants because ants kind of, uh, you know, they have those mandible attacks and, and uh, they can swarm and it would hurt and stuff. I don't even think she was as I've afraid got of us. Stabby stabbies. As, yeah. Better than mandibles. Yeah. She wasn't. I, I don't think she was. Yeah. I don't think she was even as afraid of us as, a, as, as she would be of ants. Although I'm not sure. I'm still learning this, uh, um, studying stuff. You know, it, it, as all this has been going on, Ziggy's got all his notes out and stuff, and he's been furiously, uh, he's got sketches of the Black Dragon from different angles. He's got notes on it and stuff like that. He's drawn the the bronze egg. He's got all these little arrows pointing to it about, you know, various measurements. He's written theories uh, and other sorts of things. He's got a whole stack of little parchments now that he's, he's going and, and trying to figure out uh, all this stuff. Speaking of parchment, I got a whole lot of papers here that were in the big tent. Maybe they can tell us something. I can't read it. Oh well, let it's in me weird, take a look scratchy at those. language. A weird, scratchy language. I love weird, scratchy languages. Let's see if I know weird, scratchy language. Uh, I'm a, a so. Is this just a sheaf of papers we found in the tent? Half of them. Okay. Um, can I? I'm gonna take a look at the papers and see if there's anything I can glean. Thank you for reminding me about these papers. I get kind of fixated. It was funny, it looked like someone had rifled through the desk before me though, and there were only a few pages left. Oh, do you think they, they like grabbed some papers and, and ran away with them or something before we invaded? No idea. Do you think somebody says else Carrie, might have says some of Jazz. the papers? says Jazz. Who had the other half of the papers? I don't remember. Oh, yes, right. In the, the big tent there, yeah. Um, no, I managed to find my way in there after, you know, I had perfectly played the part of Bounty Hunter turning in our good friend Mila here for the bounty. I was trying to, you know, collect our reward to see if we could have some extra funds out of the Dragon Army's hands. And uh, stumbled across some of those papers. Figured I'd scoop them up. Got a couple health potions, too. All right. This is great. Well, we're on watch. Uh, I'm going to go through those papers. Uh, cool. You were yeah. looking you know for your instrument, were you? <laughs> I mean, if it happened to be lying around, well, then I suppose it'd be best suited in my hands than in that of the dragon armies. But Why? sadly, it was not there. Why would the dragon army have a weird sea flute in their tent? It's a lute, like with strings and strums. I mean, um, lute, flute, I think uh, the same idea. Like, they're not like wandering minstrels. Why, why, why would you think there would be a musical instrument of yours in, the, in this tent? Or it's just you just check everything. Well, you know, a, a flower holds very little utility about it but people still have them it's beautiful to look at you know some might say that the strumming was fashioned for royalty so i could see many reasons why people would want to hold on to such a thing well, i suppose they might have it in a locked chest of treasures and things like that they're collecting uh and it does make sense if they had uh rounded up a bunch of sea elves that you know i i mean actually now that i think about it that is a a wise thing to look for why thank you ziggy now i oh. don't mean to dig up old graves but you know that uh -oh. was simply the reason i looked in ragaru in the very first time i met you all yeah i think it's not a good say, idea ziggy? To... <laughs> Bring... oh sorry what do the papers say ziggy uh, well, a cursory glance of the papers, uh, it looks like uh, these are letters um, from a commander named Belafion, 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 and they're talking about there's some sort of archaeological excavating. Wait, 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 I didn't catch that. Say that name one more time. Belafion. Uh, Bel no, 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 I wanted to miss it. Belafion. It's a commander named Belephant Bel LaRue. <clears throat> um, talking about an excavation at something called the Sunward Fortress. 
Do you guys remember if we encountered something about the Sunward Fortress before? Sounds familiar. Yes. Oh, wait, no, I wasn't there. It was me. one. The, the mm. CLs told me that one of their friends uh, got taken there um, by the leader of the camp or by this commander. I don't know, but that's where they said their other friend got taken. Oh, no. Did, so is this an, an active fortress encampment or is this an ex a, like a, 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 a scientific dig? I, I don't know. They didn't say. I suppose we should find out, but we forgot to escort this body, meet up with our friends and stuff like that. This might be our next step, detour. though. I feel like if we took too much of a detour, our friend's body might start to stink. I cast something on it. It will be fine for 10 days. Huh. I mean, do, do we want to take Belram on one last adventure? I think we should take him to Cudgel. Where is best. Cudgel, by the way? Like how uh, far? I don't know. I will take the far gab off my back, because of course that's where it is, and set it down. Hello, hello, anyone listening? Over. Gary, is that you? Hello, it is me. I forgot her name. What the fuck is her name? Crickle Dust? Crickle Dust! Long time uh, no it's, here. It's, it's Rickle Dust. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Don't forget to say over when you say over. Over. Oh, yeah. Fuck, sure. Uh, how far away are you from us? Do you know? Over. Uh, I don't know where you are, so uh, you need to tell us. Uh, we got held up by the wash. Yeah. Oh, it's still going or it's a new one? Over. Oh, it looks like it's society now. That's why we got more in range, I guess. Oh. Where the Where y'all headed fuck now? Are we? we can maybe... Where... Hold on, Jazz asking, where the fuck are we? <laughs> we were just near Carrion Clay. I don't see yeah, it on the map yeah, there. Yeah. Is it K? Oh, Carrion Clay is I. I. Okay. And we're, like, westish. I mean, you all haven't went very far. Y'all just kind of got out of eyesight of it and set up camp. Okay. Uh, we're just north of the Eastern Maze, um, at a place called Camp Carrion Clay. Uh, we've just gone a little bit outside of that. It, uh, we encountered a dragon, Ooh, but the, the dragon flew away. Oh. And she can't come through because you're talking. <laughs> Never mind. Encountered a dragon, but it flew away, so that threat is not neutralized. The rest of the threat in this area for now is neutralized, so over. A dragon, you say? I bet Ziggy is very happy about that. Uh, yeah, uh, I won't wait cudgel, but I'm sure her and Belra would like to talk. So, anyway, uh, we'll start heading that way. We'll meet you. Um, whereabouts do you think over. you'll be well, where you want us to meet you at you want us to meet you in a different location as you go or what if we met at high hunt would that be like a sort of halfway point or would that be way out of the way what are you talking about hearts hollow yeah Heart, hearts hollow i was reading more into it uh hearts hollow is located in the high hunt right yep all right would that be like a halfway point for us and the army or would that be way out of the way the army's following you so wherever they came from where you came from is where they're at so y'all started more in the southern border and you're moving out so they're down last the last report they gave you was um by the blue shrine phoenix that was they're in the eastern maze at the moment right let me pull up the damn map i hate to sound insensitive here but if the army's just kind of going to follow us, then what's the harm in, like, stashing Belrum 
Bob's body to the side somewhere and telling him where to find it? I don't think you have any say on what happens to Bob's body, sir. Uh, we're You're still not allowed near it, right? <laughs> just in case. Uh, no, you can't just stash a body in the middle of the desert. There is creatures, there is uh, rot, there is grave robbers, things like that. We... Uh, this is our, you know, friend. We need to bear his body back to uh, his loved ones. And, I prefer uh, to tell them in person. Yeah, I was going to wonder why, why you did so. So you didn't want to tell them over the phone what had happened. I don't know. That's probably for the best. But do you want to like surprise? Like, or if we roll, if we meet up, and like Cudgel comes running out, like, yeah, I'm going to meet him, uh, and and then we have to tell her that. I don't know. I don't want to tell him. You can tell him. I mean, I think, like, uh, information is important, and, like, I would, like, I would want to know things. At the same time, I don't, I, I don't want to break this news to, to, to Cudgel. I, I, I mean, I suppose I will. Um, He's one of his iron sides. That is his commanding officer. We will yeah. be telling her. Well, to that regard, I know Bellroom wasn't much to look at before, but he's certainly not now. So being struck with grief and the intensity yeah, of his battle wounds he's a bit man mangled a, a verbal warning might be more all right crank up the crank up the Crinkle fire dust. Yeah. are you still there over yeah i can tell her if you want i know you said that cudgel's asleep could you wake her please Choo. don't forget to say over over have you ever wakened an angry dwarf before? It's not very pleasant. Yes. Over. Tell her it's... about Bellroom. Oh, he's going for over. Why did your voice get so low? Over. Please just go wake her over. Is this sad news over? I think that Cudgel should be the first to know. Over. In my experience, if it's bad news or sad news, it's probably best to do it in person than over a telephone call. Over! Or... Sorry. Uh, fork gap. Over. <laughs> I didn't mean to say telephone call, but fork gap. We, we on this side have discussed it, and we decided among ourselves that it's probably best she get this news as soon as possible. Over. All right, but if I get a black guy, I'm blaming you. Over. I'll take that. While she's going to wake uh, Cudgel, uh, I'm going to turn to whomever I'm sitting next to, because I assume that we're kind of collectively grouped. Uh, so I'm going to just, for the sake of conversation, assume that it's... Y'all around the fire. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say that it's it's Mila, because we're right next to each other here on the, on the Zoom call. And I'm going to say... Um, I, I really don't mean to sound insensitive, but I could have sworn Cudgel was a place, not a person. Have you met this person before? Yes, yes, I have met Cudgel. Um, and how how much like Bellroom is she? Like attitude wise, or all of it, I suppose. Were they were they tell me that? That man wasn't a, a husband, was he? They were very close. We know that much. Um, I mean, they were both great warriors. I know that Kajal took Belra under her wing. Um, and I know that um, Kajal was very very close um, it was 
a very important relationship in Belgrim's life. I know that. Um, I know he talked about her a lot, <laughs> at least with me. Um, yeah, sorry if I'm not making a lot of sense. I'm very tired right now. Might just go lay down, to be honest. And I'll probably just stand up and go find a place to lie down and just pull away from the conversation. That's all I wanted while we were waiting to get casual. <laughs> Anybody else want to do anything while in the time or say anything while she's getting cudgel? I am going to sit next to Kiri so that she at least has some bit of support here. I'm just nervous about what, yeah, Angel's going to say. I'm just staring at the receiver, waiting. Uh, as, um, you're standing by the receiver waiting. Right, what's that? Yeah, the button right there, the button right there. Are you clicking it already? You're clicking. I know how this works. <clears throat> yes. Uh, <coughs> uh, what's Kajol, going on? Sorry, sorry for the early wake up call or late. I'm not sure what time it is. Um, you have to click it so they can come in. Right, 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 God. So that Hello? first message didn't come through at all. <laughs> Hello, do you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Go on, go on. Um, I'm afraid I've got some not wonderful news about Bellroom. Uh, we were we went to Camp Carrion Clay which is the place we were scouting out I think last time we were in contact um everything went well relatively speaking we freed the captives we took out everyone in the camp that was non-friendly but Belrum didn't make it What? He, um... Bellroom fell. And we... We couldn't get him back. He's... He's gone. I think there's something wrong with this. Can you say that one more time? You, he, he's, are you saying he's dead? Are you saying that my beloved Bellroom is dead? I'm so sorry. So, you're saying that the dream and vision I just had was fucking real? I don't know what you dreamed, but he's he's dead. Where are you now? We're just outside Camp Carrion Clay. We're trying to figure out where we're going to meet up. We have him with us. We wanted Where to bring him back. now? A place that is not called High Hunt, but is within High Hunt? Hunt, I mean, High Hunt, 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 Hunt Hollow. 
High Hunt is a natural place, but uh, above table, Hearts Hollow is like um, uh, you can't find it on a map, basically. It, we get more details when you actually talk to Kenna or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to a place within High Hunt. We'll meet you there at High Hunt. Very well. How did he die? Uh, uh, Kerry, I've got this one. Uh, can you hear me? I hand him the receiver and just kind of put my head in my hands. You gotta say over. Uh, over? After, after. Say over after. So there's a button there you gotta click, oh, so. okay. Uh, uh, uh. He depresses the button. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, over after. After over, yes. After over. Happily ever after. Who the bloody hell are you? <laughs> are you the one that killed Bellum? No, no, no. I, I. You see, you don't know me, uh, ma'am. But uh, you see, I, I knew uh, Bellum for a short while, but. As for how he perished, I, I thought it pertinent for you to know that when we had found ourselves backed into a corner against foes we thought we could not beat, Bellworm was there charging forward to save us. He helped us get out of that alive and, and, and many times over has saved us on this journey. And I just want you to know that he died protecting us just over check over deception or yeah i guess deception yeah you're straight lying <laughs> uh, modded 20 she got a natural 12 so This sounds like my bell. Now I, I, I really. She has not. To... She has. She has not hung up. <laughs> we'll we'll be en route to High Hunt. When you see the armies, we'll be there. Then she. You forgot to say over. Over. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, now you can say it, Dash. Uh, I, 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 I don't, you know, mean to add any imagery to you, but it, it, it's not pretty. I mean, he wasn't handsome to begin with, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I know that won't help anything, but over, over and out. Thank you for the warning. Over. Get out. Click. Well, that wasn't too bad. You say that and Carrie's got, like, fountains going down her face. Yeah, that was excruciating, but that was a really sweet thing you did uh, for Bellroom's memory there. Yeah, it was. I'm impressed. Ziggy sudden, uh, sorry, Carrie suddenly gets to her feet and marches over to Ziggy. I'm taking first watch. You go sleep. Uh, I just do... kind of march off into the darkness a little ways and plant myself. 
If you insist, I will I will do what you need. All right. I would like to sidestep over to Dashin. Firstly to take the far gap from him. Uh, he relinquishes it. Thank you. And thank you for that. Yeah, Why, well, I suppose you're welcome. You know, it's always best to add a little grandeur where the story maybe fell a little short. Common practice among bards, really. You know, dragon was here when it was really not. Uh, five bandits instead of just one. Keep an eye on Carrie tonight. Oh, I suppose I can do that. I mean, I'll be trancing eventually, but that'll be much later. Oh, actually, I can trance now if she's taken my watch. I swapped out with Ziggy. Oh. That's all I'm going to say to him before I walk back off. So now we have Carrie and Vera taking the first watch. Carrie and Destian. Carrie and Dash. And then Vera and Daz on second watch. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, Carrie and Destian. Uh, unless there's no more word 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 play, you can go ahead and roll me a perception check and you can proceed with your watch. Want to probably be disadvantage. Uh, yeah, because you don't have dark vision, so you roll with disadvantage and dash in your roll. Straight roll, because you have dark vision. Just perception? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Nine. Six. Okay. You can spend a rough day and y'all struggling to stay awake, but... <clears throat> You can have a chance to talk to each other if you like. Carrie's sort of... She's just plopped down in the dirt. And she's hugging her knees with one hand and just sort of doodling in the dirt with the other. And after some Daz silence... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, Dazzle, um... You know, not fearing any imminent danger, go... Go sit down very near her. Thanks for what you said to Cudgel. I don't well, think... I... Go on. Now go right ahead, finish up. I don't think I would have been able to do that, but even though it was a lie, I think it was the right thing to say. Well, I mean, that's just kind of what I've always been taught to do. Um, I just hope that if I were to perish, that you lot might do your best to say that I went out in a blaze of glory as well. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's not about what actually happens, but what people remember happening. And that works both ways, you know. I stuck my hand in in the fire gab the first night we met. Ultimately, I never took anything. But the memories of that night are vastly... puncturing for each of you. Was the bag of holding you stuck your hand in? Did I say Fargab? I meant to say Ragaru. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing with this, though, isn't it? We're up above our fucking heads. That dragon almost killed us all. It could have killed us all. It should have killed us all. 
We're just ants. Nobody's going to remember us. So we're just going to get squished. He's going to pull out his loot and be strumming just a little, kind of pondering on what she said. Say, um, you know, I'm sure you've spent most of your life being, being small, tiny, so I don't mean to pry on the, the size considerations of your statement by saying that we're like ants, but in the nature of insignificance, you know, everything seems to be insignificant until the moment it's not, if that makes sense. Like, water can be completely insignificant to you until there's a fire. Food could be insignificant to you until you're hungry. You know, perhaps it's not that we're insignificant, but it's just not yet our time to be needed. Food for thought, at least. When I was growing up, I didn't have anyone, no parents, no friends, really, aside from the other orphans running around. We were insignificant. Nobody even looks our way. Wouldn't toss a copper, wouldn't toss a scrap of bread. But it was when we teamed up and formed our little group of starving, or starving orphans that we could rob people blind and we could steal fruit from market stalls without anyone noticing. Because another one was off being a distraction. We were still insignificant. We were still nothing to them. But we managed. Well... Maybe that's what we need. A distraction. Well, and she I... just kind of looks off into the night, thinking... over the table this feels like you're asking for a song and i i don't have a song <laughs> made up but um you do what deschen thinks <laughs> things would happen well he is he's strumming the lute uh, all right back in character <clears throat> well I, I mean in that story also you know the shop vendor viewed his stolen fruit as insignificant or perhaps the local town guard viewed the threat of children kinder bandits to be to be uh insignificant insignificant sorry i lost the word insignificant but the fruit that you took the companions that you made those things were significant to you were they not so just because someone else deemed something insignificant doesn't mean it's universally insignificant. I know it probably seems like a pot calling the kettle black when I say that kind of thing, but... Nah. I get what you're saying. It makes sense. But she seems kind of distracted and is still looking off into the night, thinking. Is, um... 
Do you have a cudgel? Someone back home waiting for you. I was going to say, I, I prefer light weapons, but... <laughs> um, nah. Never really had time for that sort of thing. Always running just ahead of the law or ahead of whoever's after me. You? It... No, I've never really been uh, been too concerned with that department, really. Um, it's just never something I've felt like dedicating any time to, I, I suppose. I just, you know, for the life of me, never would have assumed that you know, bell room to be the what could be romantic type. So it just kind of occurs to me that while I feel comfortable around you all, I suppose that there are some basic details about one's life that I've yet to discover. Yeah, it's times like this, I realize. I don't actually know any of you all that well. I knew Bellroom and Cudgel were a thing, obviously, but has he ever been married? Does he have any kids somewhere? He said something uh, about Lord a clan Bellroom or a children. tribe or something. Really didn't know that much about him. Daz starts to laugh a little bit, which kind of doesn't fit the mood at all. What? Oh, just thinking how difficult Kudra would have had it raising Bellroom children. <laughs> he was Wonder stubborn enough. Had... An... <laughs> Wonder if they would have had scraggly little beards too. Imagine the magic. If they didn't believe they had it either. Chaos. Well, I suppose our, our watch is coming to an end. Do you remember who had next one? Uh, I think it was uh, you and Vera. I'll go wake her up. Yeah, sure. Why? She hey. goes without issue. Hold on. Let's back that up 10 seconds. As she's going to get Vera. And hey, Carrie. Don't think of yourself as insignificant. You You matter a lot. Quite a lot. And I know that the group's not one to say it, and I'm probably the least impactful of the group to say it, but I don't want to be having to make one of those far gab things again for someone you forgot to tell me about. I just kind of smile a bit, and thanks for listening, Daz. And I go wake up, Vera. Mm, my turn. Nothing happened? Nope. All clear. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, second watch is Ashton and Vera. Um... Again, same, Vera, since you don't have night vision, you roll with disadvantage, and dashing and roll with a straight roll. And I will tell you if your watch will have anything. Why are you still in that 20? 18. Yeah, 18 with disadvantage. I rolled a 14 and a 20, so, yep, an 18. I got 19 modded. Okay. 
steering your watch. You see in the distance, even Vera with your disadvantage roll, you can still see like from the bright sky in the clouds. Dash, you can see a clear um, three dragon nails off in the distance. <laughs> Headed to a different location. <laughs> Vera, where's that? No more dragons tonight, please. They're heading off further to the west. But other than that, your watch will go without issue, so you can have your interactions. Mm. As we look out at the flying dragons, Dazzle say to Vera, um, I bet Ziggy could tell us if those are good ones or bad ones. I didn't really understand that there was a difference between them. They're all bad at the moment. That That's the point. The good ones are being corrupted by the bad ones. Well, that's the way Only I like to look at it, too. Up. Only thing that can stand up to a dragon is more dragons, so they took over all the good ones. Makes sense. Well, I would assume that at some point or another, we're going to come face to face with a dragon again. You have any ideas how we might not look so comical as last time? Good, good. We got to train more. About that. Yeah, speaking I've of training been... more. I've never known a time where lying to others has ever been good. It's actually kind of against my code. But some of the times I've seen you do it, it's actually been for the better. And I don't know if you noticed in our uh, little excursion at that camp, I was not that good at lying they were just really stupid and I got lucky. So I would like you to help me with that. And at the same time, because you're pathetic, I'm going to pull out the long sword I got off of the one of the bodies that uh, at Camp Carrying Clay and I'm going to throw it at him. Hopefully he can catch it. Give me a dexterity saving throw, Dashton. Oh, yeah. 25. Oh, yeah. You catch it with ease as it flings. It's almost like, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, a standalone music video as this sword follows, flies through the fire. It just kind of whips around and you just catch it. And you can add one long sword to your inventory. Uh, you're going to help me, and I'm going to help you. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm just as surprised as you are. But, uh, sure, have you been practicing your flute anymore? A little is not enough, considering we've been, you know, running for our life most of the time. Well, I sometimes find that, uh, you know, amid emotional hills in our journeys, that uh, sometimes diving into a new skill is a good way to to get the mind going. So, so yeah, let's uh, let's play a little music, tell a few tales, and then I get to beat you up. He kind of just smirks back and says, "And yes, you can." Beat me up a little bit. All right. I'm going to pull out my flute and try to follow his lead. 
<clears throat> All right. Do you know uh, the mermaid's hand basket? You know that one? No. Okay. Um, let's see. What's more? That's more of a C one anyway. Let's think of something more. Um, uh, how about how about the uh, the Callum and March? The Callum and March. You know, just dun 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 dun. dun. And he just All starts right. to. I guess we have to do some rolls for something, don't we? This is true. You have to give me a performance check. And you can add your oh proficiency boy. with uh, to it with your musical instrument. We both got an 11, but I kind of want to use my inspiration on it. Yeah, go ahead. That's what it's there for. I don't think I will yet because I'm supposed to suck still. Okay, there we go. Now you just shine off. What'd you get? 29. I'll let you describe it there because it's beautiful. Uh, so where there's normally just a chord or two, Dastion is is moving his fingers very quickly, using all five, including his thumb, to hit different frets on the on the lute to make multiple different sounds with every strum, uh, playing both a rhythmic and marching melody of the Calaman marching song, as well as a small undertone weaved in of peaceful tavern settings all emanating from his loot as he very pompously is, is showing, boasting a little, if you will. But not, not to be rude, more of just to be finally having someone with musical interest. And what did Vera roll? 11. <clears throat> <clears throat> the song doesn't really lend to a flute very well so don't feel bad about anything going on here um but it's important to like not so much focus on the technical things of it and and really let your feelings flow i know that might be difficult for you what's that supposed to mean oh it's just uh you know you you're very um Reserved of a person, yeah. Reserved. Okay. <laughs> I will do my best over here to loosen up. Which probably just looks ridiculous. And I'm probably just stretching. <laughs> <clears throat> How does that help me blow through this stupid stick better? I mean, it, it doesn't, like, really help you play better so much as it, it helps you better. I don't, I don't know. It's just relax, fall into it. Let, the, let your emotions be what comes out instead of just the hot air that you're breathing. Trying not to take offense, telling me I'm blowing hot air, but okay. <clears throat> I'll give it a shot. I'm going to take a deep breath, try to center myself. Close my eyes because I can't look at his face. That's, that's what's throwing me completely off. And I will give it another try and uh, playing this flute. Uh, you can roll with advantage because he is assisting you. Giving you instruction, so to speak. All right. 18. I'll take, let y'all take uh, description liberties here. How you want to do it? <clears throat> Uh, as Dashton is playing with her and she's getting more confident, starting to feel the music, he picks up speed and she's 
keeping up with the speed increase as well or moving to a faster tones and everything about it there you go that's it hmm. i think i'm getting it it helps to pace myself especially with that one you would do it to the pace of your steps marching tune Yes, yes, it is true. It is true. <clears throat> I know you've got great musical talent down there. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I could have swore I heard you singing the other day. At least I thought it was you. It sounded like your voice, but it's hard to imagine such a thing coming from you. You haven't really... I've never heard those vocals before. It's very beautiful. No, Thank not, you. not saying that you're not beautiful, just that. It's not my focus. I know. There was a time where I couldn't do a whole hell of a lot other than listen to a certain person's stories and sing to myself. So I did enjoy doing that haven't had as much of a use for it since I have uh, since I became a knight why well, there's always a use for song raise your spirits help increase your sadness some people like to just dive into that black pit of despair and, and music can help you do that too who, uh, whose stories did you have to listen to for hours on end? Did you know Bellroom before all this? I did not know him before all this. And uh, I'm going to pick up my green shield and put it in front of me. Uh, uh, this person, I don't know if you've, I believe a few of us have already spoken about him before. Uh, it's been green shield. This was his, uh, he was uh, another compatriot of ours, uh, recently fallen as well. He loved to tell stories. A lot of us uh, met um, at his funeral. That was the first time we met. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Daz is going to kind of look off the opposite direction of what I assume, you know, just kind of they were both half turned talking to each other. Looking up at the stars just a little. And then uh, Thero, what do you uh, what do you make of all this with the dragon army? I mean my father used to always say that the stars were aligned exactly where they are meant to be. And to think that so many thousands of things can be lined up to create every moment. Do you think there's a reason that all of us are here together now? Yeah, I got an order to fight. Yeah, but you got an order to fight. I got a tip from Ishvan. You know, there's... there's Lots of things that had to line up for us to be at this point in the song, you know. You're talking about fate, mysticism, magics. You're here because you want to be here. I'm here ah. because I want to be here. A realist then, huh? Not much for... Romantic thought, then. You're romanticizing being here with all these women, I know. No, no that's not... You are not that much I mean, of a catch, though, so uh, calm down. 
no, that's I mean romantic in the sense of of wonder and bewilderment and fantasy, not in you know passion romance. Is that how you saw our encounter so far? Is this one of your glorious tales? I certainly hope How are you going to play yourself? Be. How are you going to play yourself in the tale of what we just did? Why, however, the music leads me to tell it. And of course, what I think might sound best. I think it... you're just trying to get out of practice. You don't want to try to go ahead and start that now? I take a two, couple swings at me? Fine, if we need to slap some steel, I suppose. Uh, I guess he'll pick up the long sword that is probably Don't still worry, sitting. Don't uh, worry, uh, I'll make it fair for you. And I'm going to put my shield down. Tiny little girl. You gonna run away this time? Come at me. Without, am I supposed to like get down on my knees or anything so it's fair it's already fair believe me you, you, you're good <clears throat> if anything I might have to hand you the shield alright well if, if you're ready and he starts to, to, to fumble towards you 60% effort sort of thing I assume we also need to make a roll here. I'm laughing because I'm at six hit points. I'm at 12. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are not oh, training weapons. So, uh, so roll to hit. <laughs> non lethal. Non lethal. I rolled a seven. Definitely uh, didn't do anything. As you swing, you like you're preparing, and then you forget that she's so small, and you just go right over her head. Vera, give me an Arcana check. Arcana, <laughs> natural one. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to do something cool, but never mind. I'm plus zero to that anyway. I'm not that magical yet. I... <laughs> I'm probably going to kill him if I swing at him. I am going to take a swing at him. I'm purposely giving myself disadvantage. Because I'm not really wanting to kill him here. And I'm also going to swing with the flat of the blade. Fifteen. Fifteen hits. <laughs> One. Try to dodge. Nine points of damage. <laughs> uh, Dashin, do you pull <clears throat> your trident? Yeah, but I, I give me a second before before that. <clears throat> but yes, I will be pulling out my trident. He's, okay, <clears throat> I guess we we're gonna take this kind of serious then, huh? Um, oh come on! <sighs> Not even the pointy end. Did that hurt? <clears throat> Is he bleeding at all from that hit? Uh, I would say uh, with nine points, you got 12 hit points. So yeah, you're bleeding uh, as... Uh, as the wound reopens that had just yeah. started to close. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, he'll touch it and he'll see the blood and he will... Um, in, a, in an instant while looking at the blood, he's going to kind of get a quick glimpse of his prayer with Mila and talking to Mishkel. And 
almost ref, uh, ref, like a reflex. That's what I'm trying to say. I was trying to say it with a L Y, but I can't, I don't think reflexively is a word, mm -hmm. but almost like a reflex. I want to, um, cast armor of Agathus. So just a, um, Oh, I have no idea what a pack slot is, but it doesn't matter. It's just your, uh, you get a spell slot. So uh, as we see a little bit of ice kind of kind of cover the wound where it was and almost create a, a, a fake small armor, like some gauntlets, maybe a shoulder pad, nothing significant, but uh, it's going to be... You, you, you notice that as he grabs the trident... And that's when all this stuff starts happening. Oh, okay. Because it's kind of like your spell focus now. That's right. That's right. I forgot that it was linked to that. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, this is interesting, and I feel quite a bit better. Um, do you think you need a health potion before this next attack? I think you have to hit me. For that to actually be needed. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Bend on the knees. 19. You did I'm drop your casting. shield. I was about to say, I'm casting shield. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to see uh, a spark of lightning and then. Do you have the spell slots Ethereum left over? I do one. I had one <laughs> level one spell slot for That's armor. That's the only reason why I did this. <laughs> That's the only reason why I did this. So there'll be a, a a spark of lightning, and then you're going to see the ethereal feathers that usually come with my aura surround me, and then it's going to rebound your uh, weapon off of it. That was so much better. There we go. There we go. Um, yes. Unfortunately, do you take any necrotic? Or frost damage from armor of Agathus? No, it's when she hits you from Oh, okay, Agathus. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, so he stumbles back off after the force of shield, you know, redirected all of his strength backwards. and That did feel a lot better. You're okay though, right? What, what on earth was that? You... We I'm both kind of... You still didn't hit me. Very good oh. try, though. Much better swing. Just got to work on that. That's what we could have used last game. Well, thank you. I um, I, I don't ever want to be as burdensome as as I was. Then this don't. is the beginning of a new chapter for Dash Jin Yinvery. Heavy roll of the eyes on the side. <clears throat> All right, we should stop talking around before we wake anyone else up. Yeah, it's about time to go take a trance anyway. And we shall return to camp or wake up uh, Mela and Ziggy. Yep. Melee and Ziggy, you can have a long rest because this is the last watch, and y'all can talk about preparing breakfast during your watch and all that good stuff. So, well, per, as we're waking up, uh, Ziggy's going to ask why, um, uh, you know, Vera and Dashin are all out of breath and red faced, a little sweaty. Oh, he wishes. <laughs> you do notice that Dashin has like iced armor all around him. All right, what have you guys been up to? A gentleman never tells, Ziggy. I see, wink. <sighs> I sure do hope somebody's in chat clipping all these one lines. <laughs> um, I, if I've had my long rest, I would like to take a moment to summon Stardust and kind of be like, oh God, are you okay? Um, you know, you could probably uh, do that, 
a few finish interaction actually take place. Okay, sure. Save it for the watch. Before um, I pass out, I'm going to go over to Hydrin and just give a good quick check in on Balram. Before well, going Hydrin disappears. Doesn't he like He oh, stays yeah. until zero hit points. I thought it was like indefinitely. A okay, nice. Nice. <laughs> So I can actually unprepare, find Steve now, and he's still there until he dies. Or I dismiss. Ziggy and Mela, you have uh, taken the watch. Uh, roll me perception checks. Uh, 26. It's a natural Nine. one. A natural one? Na no, well, a nine. natural 20. Do you have dark vision, Ziggy? I do not. Yeah, so that would have been disadvantage. I can do, like, another roll. Uh, but, like, wouldn't I have, like, cool, like, ranger training or whatever? Like, I've been away. I've, I've been out at, in the dark. Bad. What'd you get, Mela? You have nine. dark vision. I do. And you, you have... Hmm, okay. Uh... I would just say this now, uh, you will not have any uh, anything to erupt your watch or whatever, so you can you know, do whatever you want. Your turn to roll uh, social interaction. Um, well, I will take a moment to, um, you know, summon Stardust and kind of pat him on the head and be like, oh my god, buddy, I'm sorry that mean dragon ate you. Uh, Stardust is excited to see us. Um, and then maybe I'll, I'll turn to Mela and be like, wow, this has been a crazy couple of di uh, days, hasn't it? Uh, God's putting it lightly, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I've always seen you as sort of the uh, spiritual center of our party, you know, while everyone off is off in their random directions or whatever, you, you're, you know, sort of this spiritual core kind of uh keeping us on track and guiding us through Kren. how is you know i i guess the fall of someone so important to us affecting you yeah well if i'm honest um it's it's been very difficult um i've never besides ispen i thought i was you know fairly close to him um, and so I thought his passing was difficult, but losing someone like Belrum has just hit a whole lot harder. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, Ispen's passing was hard, but it seemed maybe because Ispen was so much older than us, it seemed sort of like a, an inevitability. Whereas, I mean, Belrum was was a comrade. You know, is uh, uh, fighting by our, our sides all this time, and to see him fall kind of almost makes me, you know, realize we're all mortal, uh, and and all in danger, I guess. Yeah, I uh, feel like I have this uh, great fear now of. It sounds kind of dumb coming from a kinder. We're supposed to be, you know, fearless from what I've heard about kinder. But I don't know. I can. It's strange to say that earlier, whenever, you know, I had people standing over me ready to stab me as soon as I got right back up. I wasn't afraid then, but now I'm, I'm afraid, but not for myself. I'm more afraid of losing all of you now more than I was before. And I, I know that that was always a reality, but now it just feels more real. Um, if that makes sense. I think it makes perfect sense. I think I didn't fully understand fear until these last few moments. I thought we were on a, you know, a gripping, compelling adventure. We were going to be heroes. We were going to save the day. And, you know, uh, bards would write tales of our exploits and such. Uh, but now confronting 
a real actual dragon and realizing how powerless we were losing Bellroom uh in such a in, insane crazy way uh makes me feel actual real fear it makes me worried about our party it, uh it, it, it makes me fearful for all of Kryn in a way uh, I just wasn't before. I think I was really naive uh, up until now. Probably still am in a number of ways. Well, I think you've learned a lot and what you have learned before today has helped us a lot on our journey. But, yeah. I I also feel that fear for, for Krem as well. Like, I mean, I knew. I mean, I saw firsthand what what the dragon army does behind the scenes, you know? And, and I don't know. After after today, I guess, or last night, it's it's just gotten a lot heavier for me. But, you know, I think that holding on to fear causes more trouble than letting go of it. But I just don't know how to let go of this fear just yet. Yeah, the fear feels complete and gripping and omnipresent. And uh, I don't see any way out of it except for I, I keep returning to this notion. And I think the phrase, what would Belrum do? Belrum would show no fear, you know. Uh, he would show no remorse, not remorse is the, not the right word, but um, he would show no fear and he would get in there and solve the issue. You know, all this kind of like, uh, I don't know. I don't want uh, all, all, all this dramatic going back and forth we've been doing. Like, it just isn't what Bellroom would have would have done. You know, he would have put all this t to the side and just launched himself at the problem with all his force and fury and things like that. I don't know if we should go off half cock like that, but what I'm saying is maybe, uh, I don't know, we need to put away, put aside some of these fears and uh, just run straight forward into battle to a certain degree. And, you know, try to save this, uh, save this world, save ourselves. And, uh, you know, fight for uh, the good. For sure. And I do feel like this fear I carry about losing all of you is more selfish than anything. And I don't want to be selfish. I want to help people as much as I can. So, yes, I think I'll do what Bellroom does and place aside this fear and keep moving forward. Yeah, and I don't think it's selfish at all. I think, I think having empathy for those around you is 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 the most selfish selfless selfless act you could do well thank you i think you're um, pretty selfless selfless too you know you went and uh gathered all those supplies yesterday while the rest of us were doing random things uh, i i try i just i want to uh you know i i, I want to try to be a hero like the stories that I've read uh, growing up. Uh, I've spent so much time sort of buried in books and I want to take that, those good, you know, morals and ideas from all the uh, uh, all the heroes I've read about and try to uh, bring them into the real world and use them to, you know, make, uh, make Kren a better place. That's the goal, really. Mm. Yeah, I do think you're good, doing a good job. Yeah. So, um, you've read yeah. a lot. Right. But mm -hmm. you've also spent a lot of time out in the wilderness, so how did that work? Oh, well, uh, so I, I grew up uh, on a, a caravan route. Uh, my family was a, uh, a kind of a, a team of people that helped protect the caravans as they went from city to city. Uh, so, obviously, in between cities out in the caravans i would be learning about nature about fighting monsters about uh, protection uh of the caravan and uh all those various skills and stuff but every time 
every time we pulled into a city uh, for a few days, you know, we'd escort the ca uh, caravans in. We would, uh, you know, obviously uh, handle things, get armor repaired, that kind of thing. I would always sneak off to the libraries. Uh, I made friends with various uh, sages uh, and learned uh, nobles and all that in the various cities of Kren. And I would uh, spend hours while my <laughs> while my dad was was trying to you know get everything fixed and take care of the details. Uh, I would spend hours reading uh, uh, you know various uh, histories, fictions, and other uh, sorts of interesting things. Um, in all the various libraries of Kryn. Uh, that's why, you know, I, have, I know so many languages and all that other kind of stuff. Hmm. Fascinating. Do you miss it? I mean, compared to now? I mean, it's got, <laughs> the now has gotten fearful in the last few days, but no, this, my decision to leave, um, leave the caravan life and strike out an adventure has been the most amazing thing ever. I've met so many wonderful heroes like yourselves. I've had so many great uh, opportunities to prove myself. Uh, I found this kick-ass bow that I've just been uh, shooting, shooting guys and healing people left and right. Uh, it, the, the last months or I, I don't know the time on this campaign uh the, since we've been doing this uh has been uh the most phenomenal uh part of my life so far speaking of that bowl thanks uh for shooting me a couple times earlier <laughs> no really problem i everyone deserves a, a shot for my bow at some point i think that's at least three for me now so <laughs> sure <laughs> Well, I know it's not, um, I know, you know, there's, it's, there's no way to really replace, uh, you know, uh, Bellroom or any fallen comrade or whatever, but if it would make you happier, feel free at any point, if you want to ride a dragon, I've got, a, I now have a medium sized winged dragon companion. You, you could probably take two or three kinders at a time. You guys can go on a, a, a go on a fun um, uh, uh, anytime you want to go on a dragon ride. Let me know. Stardust will be uh, Stardust will be pleased. To take you guys for a little ride. I would think a small sized creature riding him, he'd still be able to fly. I think because. They're still know. classified we'll as medium. It. Yeah, but like it says, like it, it says, a medium you know person can ride him. Uh, I'm talking about Carrie, Mela, and Vera. They're still classified as medium. Oh, are they? All right. Yeah. Well, they could still ride him. He just wouldn't be able to fly. So at this point, he is big enough that me or a kinder can give him. Uh, can go for a ride, and he can run around, but he can't take us for a, a flight ride yet. So is Dash and just chop liver, you know? <laughs> uh, I mean, Dash has a lot to prove before I let him take a dragon ride. <laughs> a Drake ride. Drake ride, <laughs> right. All right. All right. Well, I look forward to that. Um, and then I'll get up and start making some breakfast for everyone with whatever I can find. Sure. All right. Um... Whatever you have in your pack, I guess. Because you are in a barren wasteland, so. Yeah, but I think we also grabbed some supplies from the camp as well. And then I didn't grab all of that. I think Ziggy did. You said it's a barren wasteland? I mean, it's pretty um, much a wasteland, yeah. Brett, uh, can I at least, like, just throw out, like, uh, do, like, a ranger survival check on whether I can find, like, assorted roots and grubs and things and try to come up with this, like, Hey guys, you have the outlander I feet. Made. I have I have a high survival. I do not have outlander as a feat. Okay. All right. Yeah. So then roll me a survival check with disadvantage. Disadvantage. All right. Let me do this right this time. Boom. Yeah, outlander feet. You can roll. just do this, but you know. Aha. Twenty six. Nice. You're able to find. So, in this barren wasteland, you're able to find, like, 
it's very much like you know lion king finding you know the insets and stuff under rots and stuff but you can find stuff like that good luck trying to get your party to eat it though uh, all right i'll be uh, I'm, so i'm scrounging around I'm doing some light cooking and stuff and i'll be like guys i've got this wonderful uh dish it looks kind of like noodles let's just call it noodles with little bits of um uh, little bits of like pulpy root kind of stuff that I found, like kind of like a, like almost like a bamboo shoot, uh, uh, kind of stuck in there. Kind of looks like maybe a stir fry, but don't look too closely at the noodles. Why are you trying to serve as bugs? <laughs> By the way, everybody it's, can take a long rest. Yeah, it's it's a fancy noodle dish, um, you know, and that's that noodles that is bugs. Ew. You know, bugs have a bad rap. There's there's a whole food web. Uh, let me explain how the food web works. I think out I'll here stick with my vegan nourishment, thanks. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and try some of the noodles. Awesome. Brave of you. Brave of you. Yeah, I will eat some also. I mean, I would Why say not? without survival roll, it's nutritious, but I'm not going to prompt. Maybe I should do a performance to see if it's actually tasty. Are you going to kill the insects first? I got a natural 20 on my performance roll just now, by the mm. way. So it's the most delicious ask, noodles. I didn't ask for a roll. So oh, all right, to... fine. Uh, so you're just rolling to have fun at this point. So uh, <laughs> are you guys, for you, are you eating these bugs alive or are you eating them dead? They're cooked. I've stir fried them up. Oh, you stir fried them up? Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dash and a Mela. Um, Regardless of how well Ziggy rolls, they're still fried bugs. So they're kind of crispy. They have protein, but, you know, they're fried bugs. So do with that what you will. Yeah. And with that being said, everybody can take a long rest, and we'll go ahead and take our break, and then we'll pick up here with the new day. Guys, step by, and uh, we'll be back. Um, I know it's a little bit more social interactions, but I definitely want to make sure the party gets it out of their system before, you know, I throw another adult dragon at them or something. So uh, with that being said, uh, stick with us. We'll be right back, guys. Welcome back. Um, back from my short rest. And y'all have taken. Pat just had breakfast, some like fried. Um, Bear, what'd you eat? I don't think you ate the bugs. Fried buds. Carrie had a beat of nourishment. Bear. I might as well try the bugs. I do have beat of nourishment, but might as well try. I'm supposed to be loosening up. <laughs> I'll I give did. you a back rub while you eat it. Please don't touch me. <laughs> yeah, y'all loosened up on that last watch. You don't know that. <laughs> That's a bug um, table comic here. Uh, how long is your... Uh, um, shoot. Uh, armor of Agathis last? Uh, one hour, it's gone. It's gone, got it. So. All right, uh, the day is yours. What would you like to do? Oh, and uh, <clears throat> I guess I'll. Right now, we ready to go to. Actually, can I get one of those beads of nourishment? I'm not eating that. Oh, you're not you're not joining in and eating all the bugs. No, bugs I'm are delicious. Getting... Yep, yep, that's fair. I give her a bead of nourishment. <gasps> Ooh, this is fancy. I like it. Anyway, uh, you're ready to go to my home? Yep. Please Terry wait. actually does that, just silently gives her a thumbs up. Will I be allowed to ride your uh, elk with your fallen friend? Is that okay? Yeah, I think so. Yay! She climbs on up. This way now.
follow my directions. Alright. She'll... <clears throat> unless you want to ask her anything, she's not going to outright willing give information. If that makes sense. Uh, Dastrin will probe. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Dastrin will probe her a little bit. Uh, so this, um... This this camp that we're heading to is it uh is it a you know one of those well established camps like is there a pub or a tavern and uh, possibly some shops or anything? Camp. It's a thriving community. Oops. Yes, yes, right, and and thriving community means booze and gambling and whorehouses, right? brothel as well. Have an itch over there? Uh, no, but I'm I'm looking for one if you catch my drift. Maybe we can find you another manticore. Ooh. 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 What a dig mm. there. Uh, I will say as y'all start traveling, the sun is bright out, gleaming down on you. I don't know about. Let's see if she knows what those are, actually. Definitely not. I'm not sure what you're asking about. But, uh, do we do have a few places? We do have insides. Uh, our, our little community center is very pretty. Uh. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe I can visit the mosaic, which is a pebble road where you could put rocks in for visiting. And get what out of it? The experience of being on this lovely road and leaving your mark. So you're building a road for someone for free? No, 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 it's like, everybody has colored rocks, you see, and you put it down, it's a nice colorful road, and everybody puts a little rock saying they have visited here, and leaves their little mark on our thriving community. So free manual labor, got it. No, it's, whatever. Uh, but if... I am to understand what you're trying to say. Uh, what's your name, Alfie? Uh, Dashin. You can call me Daz if that's easier. I mean, do you have things like Dashin alcohol? it is. Oh, you want to so Yeah, of course. It's called the Salt Lick. It is a popular tavern. And, uh, you know, Ness, she often sits at a table and we jokingly call it the mayor's office when you want to go talk to her. Oh, and by the way, it, it's in it's in a uh, crater type deal. Like it spirals down into the, you know, the ground to keep it more secret. Uh, prying eyes. But it's not like underground, right? Like it'll still be sunlight and everything up to up top. You can still see the sky, the sky, yes. But you're just kind of like in a cavern going underneath. Sounds cozy. Do you get a lot of travelers to your thriving community? Like, is there any chance we're going to see anything else other than more kinder there? Uh, it's just people that we rescue or find in the wasteland. And uh, we do have this, uh, his name is Lavender Jaws. He's like some kind of mage or something. Is that name familiar to us from our time with uh, Lorowin? Nope. Okay. No. He 
There's just lots of people that gets lost in the wastelands and, uh, you know, find our little community or re rescue or help. But there's still like a shit ton of Kenda there, right? Oh, it's mostly Kenda, uh, dwarves, and humans. Don't think I will have seen so many Kenda in one place before. That's a bit. I don't know. Yeah, it's like three on this little group. It's yeah, like this four. is the most I've ever seen in one place. Four, counting me, See? the bestest. I think Mela's you know, the best of us, actually. Oh, I don't think so. Um, but can I just want to ask, um, how did you get captured by the the dragon army? Oh, you know, I was just out exploring. It's all kin to do. And then they just jumped me like assholes. Hmm. Uh, and that's how you got all beat up? Like you were whenever we found you? Yes, didn't give him any answers. I was tough and fearless. Oh, that's good. Uh, would, would you mind telling me what kind of questions they were asking you? What did they want to know? Where I was from, obviously. And I hmm. said, nope. Well... I'm personally glad you didn't tell them. And I appreciate you letting us come back home with you. At least for a visit. But of course. Can I insight check her? Oh, what are you insighting? What she's just been saying? If she told the dragon army more than what she's letting on. Sure. Nope. <laughs> Natural two, four, total of three. She seems totally like blink. A... Um, she seems to be, you know, telling, you know, talking kinder. Honest Kinder. You know, I'm also in Carrie's boat. I've never seen uh, a large group of Kinder before. And I have uh, a question about um, found names that Kinder have. Uh, do you know anything about that? What kind of what? Found names. That's the names that Kinder uh, find for themselves. Like choose for themselves. I guess I'm just making her... They don't give me a lot on her, so I guess I'll just make it up on the fly. Well, you know, I found a locket, and it had the name, you know, uh, Kenna on it, and I really liked it, so I took it for myself. Wait. Mm -hmm. Kenda steal names. Um. What I read... still names? I just adopted the name. From right at my my reading, it seems more like um like last names, but I do think that it's not uncommon for Kinder to find first names as well that they take to their liking. Yeah, it's, she definitely didn't have a last name, so maybe she hasn't found one yet. Maybe. Wait, so they no, just I... choose their names? From what I understand. Oh, that's weird. How'd you choose your name, didn't it, Carrie? I didn't. It's just my name. I guess my parents called me it, but I don't remember. I've always just been Carrie. Carrie Lanista. Whatever that means. Huh. Fancy name. This way. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
it's, it's going to take you like all day to get to this location. So let me know. I'll let y'all talk amongst yourselves, and you can let me know. Uh, Ashley, sorry. Uh, so I'm gonna roll a perception check. Yeah, so I gotta roll for something else. That's a twelve. Uh, you're the one looking out? Or am I going ahead? Am I scouting out further or what? I would assume that's the ranger's job. Yeah, the ranger never does it, but, you know. <laughs> I scout one. ahead all the time. <laughs> uh, I gotta roll a d10. That's what I need to roll. Do, 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 uh -oh. do, do. Okay. The sand level as it was before. So wash is not, it's to, there's no wash, there's no water right now. So uh, you, as you're looking out, you don't really see anything really right now. So it's a bright sunny day um, as you're traveling. Do you want to have a moment to talk amongst yourselves or game plan or? Talk to Rukul Dust or try to reach out, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the goal is we're walking to this Kender village. Artawa. And we're going to meet up with our army. Yep. All right. We, I told them to meet us at High Hunt. And this village is within High Hunt. So Community. the army is. Community. Com community, yes. <laughs> so are we sure this is the, the best route to take, guys? Because we did find out about this sundown citadel. The sunward Should fortress? Be, sunward fortress, yes. Thank you. Uh, should we be looking into that like with, well, with we haste? Can ask. Or, or do we want to do you think we have time to meet up with the party and do a bunch of, um, you know, dealing with the body and stuff? It's one day. Yeah, I guess it is just one day away. How far do we know how far the Sunward Citadel, whatever it is? I don't think we know where it is. I think I'm trying to think of the Sunless Cit Citadel. I think uh, we do, thing. because yeah. didn't... Uh... Sunward something. Wasn't that one of the places we were supposed to go? It's somewhat. I thought it was some, familiar. Some word fortress. Is what it is. And that was the one. And that was the yeah, place that. Found uh, it. That was the place your uh, dra uh, drow elf. No, not is it a drow elf? Some do. No. Dalaman the dark. Or yeah. not supposed to know he's the dark yet. Dalaman. Dalamar told you he'll meet you at. That was the location he said he would meet you at. I just wonder. Um, Sorry. When we were researching, Sunward Fortress was the place that Mela found. Hmm. I just wonder if we should, with at, at, in haste, go check out what's going on at the Sunward Fortress. If it's important to the the Dragon Army, if there's any sort of, uh, you know, something happening that we need to get there sooner. I mean, it is important that we go deal with, um, you know, uh, uh, Cudgel and Belrum's remains and things like that. Uh, but this location could have some sort of importance of the dragon army. And really, I mean, we could consider taking Belrum on one last adventure. I mean, you guys are all familiar with the old play um, weekend at, at Bernie's. Uh, we could, you know, kind of carry him along and ex uh, explore this fortress. The fortress is actually really far. And opposite oh. direction. Okay, I agree. Hunt. I agree. All right. Uh, you guys are right. I just, I'm getting excited about the adventure. Uh, but you're right. We need to, we need to meet up 
with the party as soon as possible. I think I'm just kind of afraid to see cudgel <laughs> a little bit, and I'm yeah, trying to come up are. with. Yeah, I'm, com- I'm trying to come up with reasons and schemes that we don't have to necessarily really totally deal with the passing of our friend and stuff like that. Um, maybe it's best that we continue on this uh, to, uh, with the original plan. I'm sorry. It's all right. Hey, uh, Kenna. Yes? You lot are like locals. Do you have a quick way to get through the Eastern Maze? We're, we're staying above ground. Yeah, but do you ever go in and have like secret ways to get through it? We try not to because of the wash. Not great swimmers, you know. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah. Well, we have, uh, like, water magic guy. Uh, like, that can help us cross rivers and stuff, right? That's true. Dashin, are you able to get us all across a river somehow? I mean, it, it, depending on the certain variables, you know, the, the wind that day and... And the length of the width of the river, but uh, for the most part, yes, I'm pretty. I'm hearing pretty a lot accustomed. of maybe's there. I want to hear a sure. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. And he repostures himself and and overactingly says, "I can traverse any type of terrain that has to do with water to the party's desires." Oh, that's the dash, and we know and love. Good, good, good show. Yeah, so I guess we meet up with our army at uh, High Hunt. And then... You have an army? Yes, we do. I mean, it's not like our army. We're, it's our we're army. Work, we're working with them a, a little bit, but... Uh, I mean, we're not like generals or anything. Aren't we? I thought we were. We're more like special ops oh anyway we're in charge under cudgel and that other lady yeah but yeah then from high hunt we can go across the eastern maze right to the spires of dawn and the sundown citadel whatever it was sunlight Sunward Sunward fortress Fortress. sunwood fortress thank you <laughs> How many times we can name this place wrong before we get it right? <laughs> <laughs> Moonlight Village. Is it the sun filled ziggurat? What yeah. was it? Ooh. That's cool. Okay. Uh, Moonless Sea. But uh, uh, let's, uh, let's keep your armies. On the outskirts of the community, shall we? We're trying to keep it as secret as much as possible. Oh, we didn't actually tell them to go to the community, just to go to Highwood Hunt. So we'll, like, wander around till we find them, I suppose. You weren't looking forward to quartering a bunch of troops in your, your home? I don't quite feel like I don't think we have enough room. We have, like, a few hundred as it is now. Hmm. Where'd you get the food? What do you mean? There's hundreds of you. And this is barren wasteland. What you do for food? We have scouts that go out. Especially when the waste comes... Not the waste. The wash comes in. They, you know, seafood, get food from there, go fishing. You know, the good stuff. I turn to Vera and Melo and go, I don't like this. I bet they're cannibals. I don't trust this. Gotta try this soylent green. It's delicious. (laughs) Wow. And we have sweet bread and stuff like that. We have bakeries, you know. 
but it's it made with people. What kind of people you think we are? I don't know. We're just double checking. We've run into a lot of strange people. Wow. She gets very sad and sits on the elk. I feel bad now. Does not say anything else. I'm sorry. We didn't mean to suggest you're a cannibal. Hey, would you want to ride a dragon? Drake? All right. Well, let me know. It could be fun. I do. Oh, Vera wants to do a Drake ride? Sure. Stardust, go give Vera the ride of her life. And it, go, it goes over to Vera. I'm going to attentively hop on. Uh, well, he can't fly, um, but he will um, try That's to like... Okay. Prefer the ground. Try to uh, try to like run or like r run around in little circles, like you might take like a like a like a toddler at the zoo, you know, around little 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 circles and stuff. <clears throat> Can't go any faster. Uh, I mean, he, yeah, he can. Uh, how far? How fast do you walk? As a kinder. Normal. Yeah. What are you trying to say? I would say that he uh, walks faster. He moves much faster than you. I think it's 40. It's in your features what he is, like his stat block. Yeah, I'm looking at it. It's just the features doesn't have a full listing of everything. Um, oh, he's only 30 feet. If I look at the guard Drake stats, it says 30 feet. I bet Carrie could outrun it. Yeah. I can outrun him. I thought it was four. I saw 40 at some point. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. Uh, it, Is that a stat block for his medium? The... Equal to your its walking speed. Let me see here. Anyway, uh, while we look that up, y'all can continue. Um, yeah, I mean, he goes, he can, he can dash pretty good. He's like going around and, um, jumping up and down, kind of like bouncing you uh, around and stuff. He's crackling, you know, little bolts of little fire, uh, uh, lightning kind of coming off of his head every once in a while. He's having fun with it. I'm sure I enjoy it then, especially with the little bit of uh, lightning. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's always got a little like every like kind of he's blue with like these little like kind of crackling bolts every once in a while. Okay, yeah, the stat block in the actual description, uh, ranger class description says it's 40 feet. Yeah, it was 40 feet, and uh, all your benefits, you just kind of add into that stat block. Yeah. So you get an extra D6 damage to the magic thing by, to your fight attack. Oh, yeah, because he's seventh level. Yeah, fight attack deals an extra one. Okay, good. Uh, and you gain resistance to the damage of the chosen type of the dragon essence. Essence? Yeah. I, I just decided he's always light when I, when I bring him out. Okay, well. But I think I can choose a different essence each time I, I summon him if I really wanted to. 
Yeah, well, I'm, he I'm, is, I'm just choosing like Born your art and the miniature I have, he is white now, so you can play on that if you like. Does this help me at all? As I just noticed he has dark vision. I mean, you can roll dark vision for him when he is. You have him doing perception checks. Yeah, and if I, I assume if I cast my beast bomb uh, spell or whatever it is, I would actually take advantage of his dark vision too, right? Where is your beast bond? Is that you see through the beast's eyes, or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so you would give up your consciousness to look through his it's eyes. Yeah, it's so you do a check for him still. So it's basically like a fine familiar type deal. Okay. Well, I'll remember that next time I need dark vision. Because I barely use my spells to anyway. play. Right, Beast doing? Sense is what it's called. Moving on up. Uh, yeah, I mean, Vera, for, uh, as we walk, you're more than welcome to continue riding um, uh, the the dragon, uh, the, the drake around a little bit, and then we'll uh, walk to the Kinder Village. Yes, concentration up for an hour for your beast sense. Oh, I didn't use the beast sense. I'm just letting. I just yeah, yeah. So yeah, for... yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is a concentration. That's important to know, actually. Yeah, it, it lasts up for an hour while you're concentrating. Okay. I can be you to do useful. it once per long rest. It's your primal awareness is what it is. Yeah. Same thing with your speak with animals. You can do that once. Also, like rather than hunting up bugs, I could have just straight up done create food and water. But I think the bugs were more fun. Like a little, a little, little local flavor. All right. What do y'all want to do? Anything else? Oh, still following Kina. And I will gladly take the ride on Stardust. Got it. Uh, Mela? Just did you, walking. Did you, did you and Dasher want to have a chat since, uh, you know, y'all didn't do it in the night? Okay. I'll, uh, I'm just asking. I'm, you you, you yeah, certainly no, no, no. don't have to. That's good. I'll walk. Uh, I'll just match page pat pace with wherever he is, um, and come alongside him. And how are you doing? Uh, you well, I'm actually glad to have a a chance to talk to you because um, you know, ever since our little prayer the other day, um, you know, I I, I was doing some training last night with uh, with Vera and something happened and and when i got struck i just or like whenever I, whenever i grab my weapon to fight back it uh, this this icy armor just kind of appeared all around me it made me feel very very protected i i, I know it it couldn't have been much but do you think that has something to do with lady mishkel i do think that that is uh part of her favor upon you yes um, you were fighting each other? Is that what you said? Uh, more like a, a, a light sparring, really. A, a, a tussle in the woods, if you... Uh, it's not really woods, is it? It'd be in the desert. But uh, <clears throat> it, not much, you know. I gave her some tips on... on uh, I was going to say how to blow things, but we'll... we'll, we'll G rated up just a little more and say uh, I was teaching her about some flute training and uh, she she worked on my sparring just a little bit. Don't worry, I have the banner for uh, mature <laughs> audiences. Oh, well, that sounds fun. Did I mean um... if I'm supposed to, you know, be your protector, it kind of kind of would help for me to learn how to protect. Well, that's true. So where does like this journey with the Lady Mishkal go from here? You know, like where's what's my next step? Um, like to grow with her, 
they grow in relationship, I guess, with her more. Um, I guess, uh, is that what you mean? Sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, kind of, kind of, not uh, in the sense of like, yeah, I, I've never had ice just encapsulate my body in the form of armor before. Uh, these are just some new things. I, I kind of really don't know what else to expect. Is is things going to continue to go like this? Like when you first started gaining your powers, did they come to you like out of a, a reflex of necessity, or did they did were they bestowed upon you by your own free will? It's just all very strange to me. Is all I apologize. Difficult no, questions. Right. I understand. <laughs> that's all right. I completely understand. I mean. I feel like I'm going through the same journey as you right now. Uh, no, uh, definitely at the beginning, it was definitely more reflexive of reacting to things uh, as they happened rather than me thinking about it or planning it to happen. But since then, I've learned a little bit of my strengths and what my abilities are that Mishikul has given me. So I definitely have learned more. Uh, but mostly through experience um, and through um, like moments like last night, um, you know, being tried and true <laughs> method, I guess, seeing what will happen. Not that I'm like considering it in any shape or fashion, but what would have happened if I were to fail at my objective? Like, like if I die or if you fail to protect me, that, um, I don't know that that is for Mishnacle to, to decide. I honestly have no idea what would happen to you. Damn. I was really hoping to have a little bit something to help me sleep a little better. Because I feel like if I don't know you're okay, then, you know, if you happen to perish while I'm trancing or something then am i gonna perish as well i don't know but i do believe that she wouldn't have given you this task if she felt that you would fail at it if that makes sense that is really reassuring and i think you don't give me enough credit <laughs> i think as we saw last night i'm a bit difficult to kill Yes, so uh, you definitely make no understatement there. The exaggerations for your tale will not need to be many. Oh, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mayla kind of just like doesn't know how to respond, so she's just walking silently for a minute. Uh, thanks, I guess. Another question. There's no, like, purity vow or anything that we have to undergo, is there? Um, not that I'm aware. I think it's more of a personal choice. Whew. Thank God. It's a bit late to ask that one, but I was just kind of hoping that it <laughs> didn't come with the job, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least for me, it was a personal choice. So I'm guessing for she, it would be a personal choice as well. He seems to have a, a much more lackadaisical stride now. A lot more comfortable walk. Well, I can't wait to see how your journey unfolds, Dostian. I think it'll be an epic one yourself. I too hope that it shall be. And this time, instead of worrying about the words to it, I'm just going to let my actions do the talking and let the words follow after. I mean, no best-selling book was ever an autobiography, right? It's always someone else who has to spin the tale for your personal adventures. That's true. <laughs> well, if you do have any more questions, feel free to ask. And I, um, I'm sure Vera would have some thoughts on it as well if if even i can't figure some things out i know she has some experience with similar situations that we are in so
Well, thank you, Lady Mila, for putting me in contact with Mishkul. I've, I, I don't know, so much has happened in this last 24 hours, but my life seems to have taken on a different feeling of purpose. Like each step feels like a step forward somewhere. Like I'm accomplishing something merely by pressing on. I, it's just, it's, it, it's peculiar. For the first time, I'm not having to think about just me and, and my obsession with an instrument. Now it's everything about this day just feels, feels right. That's, I feel like that's true for me as well. Since I found, uh, since I guess Misha Cole first talked to me, yeah, felt right. Like, like suddenly you can breathe for the first time after never realizing you never could breathe. In a way, I guess. <laughs> and then I'll just walk away. <laughs> There's no other. Who's <laughs> uh, If there's no other conversations, um, as you move on throughout the day, uh, do you want to stop and have, you know, chow or a midday snack? Or are you going to start? Well, a busy nourishment lasts all day, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the people actually think so, 24 hours. Yeah. So Kiri and Kenna are doesn't are not getting hungry, but everybody else seems to get a little mm, hungry. Guys, I, I did make a nice uh, trail mix with the rem, uh, remaining leftovers from uh, breakfast, uh, and I, I, I try to hand somebody just a bag filled with squirming things. There it is. Blow that up. Like it's delicious. It's trail food. And I'm like, you know, porking some of it in my mouth. Stardust is loving it. Carrie's just delicacy Ugh. in some countries. <laughs> exactly. I reiterate. Ugh. So what about uh Dash and Vera and Mela? What are y'all eating? I'm gonna pull out a bead of nourishment. I will utilize some of my uh, rations. Uh, probably just like some mixed nuts. All right, Mayla. you said trail mix, and it got me thinking. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably just have like um, like half a ration or something. Try and ration my rations. Uh, Carrie, what's your passive perception? 14, right? Uh, 14, yes. I mean, I don't think she's being stealthy about it. Uh, Ashley, may I, like, grow me a sleight of hand check. Me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Twenty one. Twenty one. Never mind. I taught you well. You, uh, Mele, you eat a, a half your ration and you stuff it back in and nobody notices. All right. Cool. I was going to see if anybody noticed you eat only half a ration and stuffed it away. Like you're starving yourself. <laughs> All right. Uh, move into the second half of the day. Somebody give me a perception check. Uh, I can do that. 19. Ooh. I might not do better than that. Uh, 26. It's a natural 20. No nice. Nice. Yes. It's the, s the sun is still out. Blazing down on you. That's what the check was for? To know the sun was up? No, oh, I rolled the, the weather die. It shines. I Remember, I, I have a weather die. <laughs> now, the check is sure. to see uh, 
something which you didn't see anything of threatening, I guess just to say. Uh, so we're moving to this, the second half of the day, moving into the evening. Um, if y'all want to have another second half of conversation or not. Anybody? I'm just walking. All right. Because if we don't, I'll move into the cliffhanger for the for the evening. So. I mean, if you want me to fill up time, we can. I can try to do something else. I just want to make sure everybody gets okay. what they want to do, and I don't like to rush people. So. And Carrie's done everything she is planning on doing, and discussed everything that needed to be discussed, sir. Yeah, I think we've done a lot. Yeah. I am fulfilled, but I have some trickster things if we're needing to bide some time. Don't need to bide. Yeah, time. we could do a little Kenda swap. <laughs> Loot swap. <laughs> I mean I mean I don't know how late y'all wanna go, but what I have planned can fill up to the next ten minutes, so Well let's uh let's roll into it. Alright. Alright, Ziggy. Well you we'll just use those rolls moving into like the late evening bro. Late afternoon verge of sundown. Uh let's see. Let me find the spot I need to be at. As who has a highest perception check, which I think is Ziggy and Mela, right? Yes. At 16. I had a 22. Oh, sorry. Oh. Passive, passive. Passive. Yeah. No. I follow. I think it's Ziggy and Mela. You both have 16s? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, as you get near, she's like, it's just up ahead there. We should be there at nightfall. And as y'all hear past perception, think uh, as you're moving, are y'all trying to still stay above ground or are you still going through the valleys? Eventually you have I'll to go stay, through the valleys as much as you can, right? So at this yep. point you're kind of down in the valleys and you're seeing some more hilltops, whatever, but uh, come around the bend, uh, Mela and Ziggy, you hear, uh, well, Water rushes into the canyons ahead, rising swiftly. Suddenly, flooding spreads, uh, it spurred creatures to seek higher ground. It, uh, you hear energetic cursing up ahead. And you see this individual. Let me put it. Uh, a human in rugged leather rapidly climbing a rope out of a chasm pursued by several horse-sized spiders. Did you say spiders? Yeah. Okay. Horsed, horse-sized spiders. Uh, and the canyons are quickly filling up with water. I'm assuming y'all want to rush over, and he's climbing a rope to like a ledge area to climb up to get out of the water while trying to escape. Uh, guys, it looks like we have a damsel in distress. Got to run up. So we have no way to get up aside from this rope. No, he's climbing up a rope himself that he had. Uh huh. And it's kind of we... like a. There's another way for us to get to high ground. Yeah, you can climb well, up like usual. Through. You can climb up like usual, but he also mm -hmm. he also has uh, sit spiders chasing him, mm -hmm. and two break off and starts heading your direction. Uh, Everybody, stop climbing! I get out my short bow. Yeah, are they within 120 feet of me? It will be. But okay. with that being said, we'll go ahead and draw an ending to tonight's episode. So, because I still have to build the location. 
and that's great i think that's good stuff yeah because uh, i don't especially not to go into combat for uh an end of an episode i mean then we drag out for like two hours but it won't drag out that far but that being said a draws an ending to tonight's episode as y'all move further and closer towards Hearts Hollow. You see a new individual. Um, actually, I'll even give you this. Uh, Kenna sees. Look, it's the Dragon Hunter! during that so um, like he points at the guy and says dragon hunter yeah okay interesting I mean that's a set name that's what we have given him well we should definitely rescue him then we have some dragons we need hunted he's a like mind a compatriot we have much to talk about dragons uh, well that being said that draws it into the night's episode I know it's not a bunch of combat or whatever, but you guys just had like three sessions of tense combat, so and a lot to debunk. So we're coming out of that into some new combat next week. Uh, again, as, as a reminder, not next week, but the ooh, actually next week is the last episode uh, because the twenty first. I'm packing up my stuff, so I don't really have anything. So. So the next week is our last episode of Dragonlance until I go on my long break. And I, if I can, at some point during, I might do like a marathon for stream or something. If I get enough, good enough uh, computer to run it or like a laptop or something. But uh, that being said, uh, thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below what your favorite part was. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the the Black Order, the Fell Sneak. You need some more uh, lights, so that helps out the party. Um, that being said, we'll cut it over to Nalish. Uh, you said you wouldn't live again, but when will you be live? Well, I'm not muted. Good. Okay. Uh, probably Sunday. Uh, just not tomorrow. I have a lot of things I have to do. Um, if I could uh, be live tomorrow, I'd be really late. But yeah, probably not. So I'm not going to rush that. But yeah, uh, Sunday evening. All right. And Dashin. Or I'm sorry. Cleansing Rain. Either way. Um, <laughs> probably not in the next seven days, but hopefully in eight days from now, uh, kicking back off the stream, uh, placing some orders on things tonight. So, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, get some stuff and couple days to get everything set back up how i like it and hope to be returning to streaming uh next weekend and looking forward to it very nice uh I like it to, uh next time we'll be live on the channel will be monday and that will be our last episode for the break uh for order to goblet uh we will be recording uh sunday night uh the, the new black order um they are now infiltrated i gotta finish that build tomorrow uh i've decided if i want to have a, a big build or not we'll figure it out or i'll figure it out myself and uh you know dealing with the twins so and that is going to have our lovely bookworm and jazz in that game so we'll be recording that sunday night and be published monday so make sure you go to the youtube and give the previous episode a lot of lights all that good stuff. And there's a new stretch goal on there. I already know what it is. If we get 800 subscribers, they get a artifact. Now, I've already chosen what the artifact is. So, it's going to be a good one. Uh, with that being said, uh, thank you for watching. You guys have a wonderful night. And uh, we'll see you this time, next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Dragonlance. Have a good night, guys.
Feel it burn.